Now let's take a little, talk a little bit more about these channels that cross the membrane, these transmembrane proteins, these ion channels, these receptors. They have multiple names. Um, they fall into two basic categories initially based on how they are gated, how the gates open. So some are gated by a change in voltage that travels along the membrane. So they're called voltage-gated ion channels. And some are gated by a chemical messenger of some kind. And typically we think of it as a neurotransmitter that binds. Chemical-gated ion channels. Sometimes these are called ligand, L-I-G-A-N-D, ligand-gated, means the same thing, naturally occurring. Chemical-gated ion channels. Sometimes they're called receptors because they bind, but they don't have a channel. They receive the neurotransmitter and then later send a message to open a channel. So don't be confused with the different names. The important things now are the difference between voltage-gated ion channels and chemical-gated ion channels. This is an example of chemical-gated. Both of these are, actually. And this is what's called an ionotropic channel where as soon as the green sphere, which is the neurotransmitter, binds, it opens or closes the channel and lets ions either move in or out of the cell. And those ions are sodium, potassium, chloride, calcium. So we'll talk about those specifically a little later. But that's what's going on. The neurotransmitter binds and the ions move in or out. Another type of chemical-gated channel is a metabotropic channel. That's the one down here. This charge of yellow means energy is needed. M metabolic activity is needed. It requires what's called a second messenger. The first messenger is the neurotransmitter that binds, and then it stimulates a cascade of events and a second messenger to go to the ion channel and open or close the channel to allow ions to move in and out. So we have voltage-gated ion channels and chemical-gated ion channels.